My name is Julie, this is Michelle. We are going to ask Michelle about some of her research projects. Hello Michelle. Hi Julie. Hi. Thanks for asking me some questions. What was your research project about? Well, I'm going to be talking about my last research project and that was about domestic violence and women with learning disabilities. So domestic violence is when someone is in a relationship, mm -hmm. so these women have boyfriends or husbands, and then there's abuse taking place in that relationship so that they were being hurt mm -hmm. and harmed in that relationship. Why was it important to do this research? Well, I thought it was important because there's lots of research on domestic violence and women in the general population. Um, and there's a little bit of research about domestic violence and women with physical disabilities. But there was really very little on domestic violence and women with learning disabilities. So the work that I had done in the past about relationships and um, people's sexual relationships led me to think that there might be an issue about domestic violence and I wanted to find out more about that and there just really wasn't very much known about it so I thought it was important to get started and do it. When and how did you do this research? Well the research took place a couple of years ago and um, we're just finishing it off now really. Um, how we did it was we started by talking to some women with learning disabilities. So we went to some women's groups and we talked to them about the whole topic of domestic violence, what they knew about it, what they thought other women with learning disabilities might know about it and what they might experience. So we weren't asking those women about their own experiences, but we were just talking with them about the topic. And we did that so that we could... Um, that, that, that would be a good kind of basis for us to do the research so that we knew that we would be asking the right kind of questions to, to women when we met them. So we did that for a little bit and then we actually put together our interview questions and we went to interview uh, women with learning disabilities and we, we were hoping that we would talk to 20 women but in the end we only spoke to 15. But that, so that doesn't seem like very many but what we did was we, we talked to them for a long time. So although the numbers are not big, mm. we spent a lot of time with the women. And so we would be talking to them for, in depth. So we were asking about their experiences, what had happened to them, how they eventually got out of that relationship, if they got any help from anybody and what that help was. Mm. So we, we, we spoke to them for What did you find out? We found out lots of things. I suppose the first thing we found was that even though it was a relatively small group of women and we hadn't selected them in any way other than we knew that they'd had that experience, we found that the violence was often very severe, the physical violence. Um, so even in our small group, we had a number of instances where women were um, either strangled, pushed down the stairs, hit with a heavy object on the head, a knife had been used. So mm. actually, very serious mm. things. Yeah. Mm. And in, I think there were a, a, at least three women for whom that could have been life-threatening. They actually could have died from that assault, and they didn't, thank goodness. But mm. it was serious enough for that to happen. So that was quite a surprise and an important finding, I think. We found that, as well as being severe, that the violence was quite frequent, so it wasn't something that happened once in a blue moon, it actually was something that happened for some people every day, for some every week, you know, it was a, a frequent thing. And also that it tended to last for quite a long time, so it wasn't over, you know, the relationships were not necessarily over and done with within a yeah. few weeks or months. Yeah. For some women, it went on for a yeah. number of, of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that that was one thing. I suppose the other important thing we found was that about half the women 
had um, had been pregnant and had had children in those relationships, and all of the women who had been pregnant when they were in those relationships had been physically assaulted whilst they were pregnant, and that's obviously mm -hmm. a, a very serious mm -hmm. matter. And the other thing that we found was that the abuse cap covered lots of different areas. So I've, I've spoken a bit about physical violence, but that's only one yeah. kind of, of violence yeah, that happens. Mm -hmm. There mental, was... Mental violence? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. There was definitely kind of mental abuse, so kind of emotional, mm -hmm. psychological... Blackmail abuse. Sorry? Blackmail abuse. Yeah. Blackmail, I'm not sure anybody spoke about that, but I mean, that mm -hmm. easily could have happened. Yeah. The kinds of kind of emotional things they were talking about were... Um, their partners being just kind of very cruel to them and horrible and insulting them and putting them down all yeah. the time, so constantly making them feel yeah. bad yeah. about themselves. That that seemed to be very common. Financial abuse was another thing yeah. that they spoke about um, the men taking their money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether that was their kind of regular mm -hmm. income and benefits money generally. But sometimes they had savings mm -hmm. as well, which would also be taken. So there was a whole range of, of different things that happened, um, some of which has been written about a little bit before in research, but I think one thing I've not seen before in relation to women with learning disabilities was this thing called coercive control. I don't know if you've heard about that. So uh, the, the term coercive control means when somebody else, when your partner in that kind of relationship, tries to just kind of completely dominate and control your life so they tell you where you can go, who you can go with, what you can do, whether you can have a job, what you can wear, all of those things and just they try to control yeah, that. Control. Mm -hmm. um, and all of the women really in our study spoke about that was mm -hmm. happening in their lives and that they found that really difficult uh, to deal with and one thing that seems to be happening more recently, I suppose, is, is the use of mobile phones to control mm -hmm. women so that even when they were not with their partner, the partners use the phone as, as a way of controlling. So they're constantly phoning or texting, where are you, what are you doing, who are mm -hmm. you with, get home now, all of that. So mm -hmm. it makes women never be able to kind of escape mm -hmm. from the violence mm -hmm. that the, the women spoke about, about that for sure. What's important people with learning difficulties to know? What's important for them to know? Mm. Well, I suppose for, for women with learning disabilities to know, um, I suppose to, to know that they don't have to put up with that kind of behaviour, mm. actually, that it, they're worth more than that, mm. and that they, it's not something that they should expect or tolerate. Um, that there are people who can help mm -hmm. to get out of that kind of relationship because that's not an easy thing to do if you're kind of in that mm -hmm. kind of relationship where you're being controlled it is quite hard to, to think about how you might get mm -hmm. out of it and particularly because often your self-esteem is very low because of what's happening mm -hmm. to you it's hard to kind of see a way out of it but there are people who can help there are lots of support services for women who experience mm -hmm. domestic violence there are places that women can go sometimes if they literally need to escape, like a women's refuge. Yeah. Um, and, you know, some of the women in our study didn't know about those, never heard of them, so they didn't know that there were that were those possibilities. So I think those those would be important. I think the other thing that came directly from from our research that I think women with learning disabilities need to know is just to be a bit kind of wary and suspicious when you meet a new person mm -hmm. and take the relationship at your own pace yeah. because a number of the women in our study described a kind of situation where they would meet someone and almost before they knew it he'd moved in to, the, to, to mm -hmm. their flat and the woman didn't really want that it was, no. it was going too mm -hmm. fast and that was but the kind of circumstances were such that mm -hmm. That, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. So the man would say something like that he was homeless mm -hmm. because he didn't have anywhere to stay. And the woman might say, well, you can stay at mine for a few days till you find something. But then once he was there, he never left. So it was, though, just to be a little bit wary of those mm -hmm. kind of things, I think, would, would be useful. Mm -hmm. What's important for other people to know? 
for other people to know. I suppose if anybody is is supporting women with learning disabilities, the kind of things they need to know are that, that clearly domestic violence does happen mm -hmm. to women with learning disabilities, to be aware of that, that that's a possibility. And also to ask women if they're okay mm -hmm. and if everything is okay in their relationships and not wait to be told because a lot of women find it very difficult mm -hmm. just to say that that's happening. But if you're asked questions about your relationship and how's it going and is everything all right, and then that kind of gives you an opportunity to say if something's mm -hmm. not all right. So I would definitely say to, for, for supporters to be proactive about asking. Mm -hmm. And the other thing we found in the study was that sometimes supporters, so it might be social workers or, or okay. support staff, mm -hmm. um, sometimes GPs or, or community nurses, they actually did know what was happening in the relationship, but because the women didn't kind of, they didn't formally report it, mm -hmm. and they weren't actually asking for help to escape, mm -hmm. then nobody really did anything about it. So the workers were kind of waiting for a proper report or a request mm -hmm. to help, and I, I think that's, that's not terribly helpful mm -hmm. either so that they, they need to be more proactive so asking and offering help mm -hmm. I think would be really useful. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about your project? I think the other thing that came out as being really important was that women with learning disabilities needed some kind of good information and good accessible information about domestic violence so that's one of the things we tried to do mm -hmm. with this project is to produce some so we made a dvd for women with learning disabilities so they can watch the video and there's lots of information in there about what to do if it's happening to you and also some easy read mm -hmm. information so that women can can just kind of look at that and, and mm -hmm. understand and, and find a way to find someone to help them um, so I, th I think that's also really important if people should kind of make women aware of that Okay, thank you Michelle for coming today. My pleasure, thank you very much. Thank you.